You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Thanks for joining me on Two Guys, Two Gals, and a Lot of Wine spring-themed episode, which we're going to call Chardonnay or Chardonnay. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. Chardonnay or Chardonnay. And joining me are three friends that are going to help me taste these Chardonnays, backed by popular demand, actually, because we did a Chardonnay show a little while ago. We have my sister-in-law, Jennifer Cohn. Hello. We have Rob Oliver, and we have Melissa Politti. And these wine gurus will be judging wine with me. And we're going to be tasting some stuff that pretty much none of us has tasted before, except for one bottle, which I think the ladies had brought in for our drinking pleasure. So you're watching this in April. It's probably getting warm out. We're all sick of the wintertime. So hopefully you'll be enjoying the weather. And hopefully you'll grab a bottle of Chardonnay and drink with us. So the first bottle we'll be tasting today is one that I know nothing about. It Got a good review. It's a very easy to drink spring wine. Mm -hmm. It's called Ooh La La, so it's going to look good on a picnic table. I know the ladies like a fancy kind of cute bottle. It's a only 9% alcohol Chardonnay. It should be packing a tiny bit of effervescence. Shouldn't be quite as bubbly. Now that's what the review said. Now is that going to be the case? We're about to find out, guys. So if we we'll all pick up our glass and give Ooh La La its first sip. If you want to give it a little smell, feel free to. I get really not much there at all. Mm -mm. No, not very much. Hmm, almost more like a just champagne. Sweetness. It is. It does have a little bit more of a bubbly effervescence than I was anticipating. It is marketed as a true Chardonnay from California. Oh. But I can see how this actually might be kind of enjoyable, not in a super hot day, but in a spring day, maybe. In a spring day, sure. there's definitely a lot of effervescence, and there's a little bit of a sweetness to it, I thought, as well. There is a little bit of a sweetness to this. Uh, I'm not sure I would call this a classic Chardonnay flavor. I would think you could almost use it uh, in an almost dessert wine type of way mm -hmm. after kind of a summer. Oh, yeah. wow. I, I would not go that high on like the sweet content, but, I, you know, that's an interesting mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. um, let me take another sip. Maybe sitting out on the deck after you have your... Yeah, it's obviously not as sweet as uh, true dessert wines, but thought came to mind. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting because it is only 9% alcohol, right? Mm. So um, you can drink a lot more of it without uh, <laughs> right. it hitting you in the, uh, in the brain area yes. too quickly. I could see it be, being very refreshing. But I will mm -hmm. say it's a very cute bottle. It, you know, if you're going to need a lot of wine for a party, a cookout, and you don't want to spend too much money on it, once again, it... It's in the nine dollar, eight to nine dollar range. You can find it locally if you did a little search online. I think, on a scale of one to five, I'm going to give it a three, only because I think for our first springtime Chardonnay, it's interesting enough where I would let other people try it mm -hmm. at a party. And if, if people didn't drink it and they threw it out, then I wouldn't buy it again. Right. Yeah, I think a lot of the women would like it. Okay, so you're going to well, give it a. Actually, I'm going to give it low because I I don't like really sweet, but I think that. Um, that women like the sweeter side sometimes when it comes to wines. Or if you're just getting into Chardonnay. Oh, that's a good, good point. Because, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I'm, I'm just sort of getting into Chardonnay, um, more of a, a red person. So it could be a nice yeah. entry point. Rob? Yeah, I'll probably give it on the, on the lower side, maybe a three. It I could be three. good, for, again, for people who enjoy sweeter wines, um, maybe people that uh, kind of get into the the blushes a little bit more. Oh, there you go. Um, I, I pre-opened this, this, actually. I should point out that for our viewers, it is so springy, it actually has a pop-off cap. 
So that might give you some ideas to what to expect in the price point That's right. and the quality. You know you're at a classy party with <laughs> pop off. Well, you know, you got to open them fast, Rob. That's right. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> I drink them fast. Yes. I have friends that don't want to wait sometimes for that corkscrew. <laughs> so it's, that might actually work pretty well. It's a winner there. It's a novelty also. Yeah. So it's I, interesting. Generally, I give thumbs up, half thumb, or thumbs down. I know we're doing a number rating. Go either way. But I'll, I'll stick to a, a three around there. I'd say three. Because only because it's kind of original and unique. But for long-term drinking, I definitely don't think I'd do that for No, long-term. no, definitely not. One glass. I agree. Right, so we're pretty much in agreement on, on that yeah. first one. Mm -hmm. Now, the second one is what you would probably call your classic mm. French Chardonnay, the Lalande. Um, it's available locally. It's in the $13 to $15 price point, sometimes a little lower, sometimes a little higher. Um, generally, I like everything French, as my viewers know. I'm a big French guy. I love French wines. I love French reds. You name it, I like it. However, I've never had this one. I've only read the reviews on it. Mm. Do you guys have any experience with French Chards at all? No, I think uh, we tend more to the California. Right. It's no, I ha I've never had. Actually, I don't think I've ever had French. I don't think I have either. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. <laughs> yeah, I've had a few quality French uh, Chardonnays. I mean, love French restaurants, and, and mm -hmm. when we go, we definitely go with French French wines and um, have good experiences. Usually, there's good They're stuff not coming out of France, and the butter. The, the, well, that's what I'm usually interested. always high. So. I believe this is a steel oak, or I'm sorry, steel oh. fermented, not oak. So that okay. might make a difference right off the bat with right our first there. taste. Oh. And uh, we're about to find out also. Right. So. Okay. That's a very earthy mm. aroma right off the bat, which I would expect from French. Mm -hmm. Well, I got some comments on this one, but I'm not going to start. Let's let the ladies who haven't had French wine comment on this one first. I think that's really good. I think that, like you said, it, it smells buttery, it tastes buttery. Um, I, I liked it. Jen? I think it's quite tasty. Um, it, it's not, to me the flavor wasn't too overpowering or too strong, but uh, it, I thought it was quite, Quite good. Yeah, I thought it was it was crisp for mm. Chardonnay, mm -hmm. um, so it had a little bit of that the bite on the end, uh, which was which was nice. And actually, that's a good comparison when you start off with first of all a lower alcohol wine, a Chardonnay from California, which I don't want to say is a gimmicky wine, even though it's sort of bottled like that. Mm. But you got more sweetness. There wasn't a lot of um, character in that first mm. one. Right. This one has character. This one is something that from the first sip to even right now, I'm still it's getting still. some taste in the back mm -hmm. of my throat. And um, I don't think it's buttery. I don't think it's as heavy as the Chardonnays that I've had in the past. So uh, I got maybe it's because this. after we just tasted that other one, yes, <laughs> that I felt like that. I'm not sure, but I I would definitely buy that. Bottle. Yeah, there's a crispness, like Rob mm -hmm. said. There's it's dry, drier than it is dry. You know, some of the other California type Chardonnays. So, and I mean, I should point out. I guess you guys all know this also is most white wines like this should be a little on the chill side. Mm -hmm. There are some whites that really are almost undrinkable if they get room temperature. Um, we might find after the show, guys, that when we're drinking and you're done watching us, <laughs> these might be undrinkable because they're going to be room temperature. I'll let you know in a future episode. Right. But uh, I think this one actually... <laughs> we'll make it happen. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about us. <laughs> this one actually might hold up well at room temperature. I think mm -hmm. there's enough going on there where even as it, it warms up. warms up a little bit, I still think it would hold its flavor. And I know Melissa really prefers a nice cold... So Chardonnay. I'll start down this end, listen, I'll work from Rob to Jen. What was your first wine? Was it a oh. Chardonnay? My first wine, no, was actually uh, Pinot. Oh. And as I got older, I really didn't like the sweetness of it. Mm. And I um, started having Chardonnay, and I've just been with it ever since. Mm. Rob? Mm -hmm. First wine, yeah. white wine, or? Yeah, we'll go with white since we're drinking white right now. Uh, was Blue Nun. Uh, I don't know if you uh, if you're familiar with it. Familiar. <laughs> yes, but it was uh, it was always in the in the house as a dessert wine. Mm. Um, so I had that, but then um, you know Chardonnay was was the first white that I really so it was. Tried. Well, that's yeah. really been was popular for many years mm. until the different varietals of white have become more popular now over the last decade, probably like the Sauvignon Blancs. Pinot yep. Grigios have made a big resurgence. Even Rieslings, which I still haven't done a show on yet, but I would like. And that's to. what Blue Nun was. Yes. Oh, it's a Riesling. Riesling. Yeah. Oh, well, there are actually okay. three varietals of Riesling um, from the drier to the sweeter side, but that's for another whole show. Jen, what about you? I, if I could recall, 
I probably was a, a Chardonnay, more likely than not, just because I think it was, you know, at the time, an easy choice and just something to, mm -hmm. to start with for first wine. Well, for our second wine, I'm going to give mine a, a hearty thumbs up, I think. I enjoyed it. I would definitely give I would four or five. Mm -hmm. Easy. Yeah, and two, I would definitely two thumbs up. Purchase that's that. definitely one I would purchase in the future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I was going to say that, that was an interesting thought. Just would that still be good, you know, not cold? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, you know, poor white wines, if they're really cold, they'll be okay. But, you know, that, well, if that one is, will stand the test. Certain right? white wines, if they're actually too cold, you're not getting any character at all. It's, very, it's a very thin line for some white wines, what the temperature should be. If they're too cold, you're losing a lot of the characteristics of the grape. If they're too warm, then you're getting actually the character of the grape that you don't want to taste because it's the wrong temperature. Mm -hmm. So certain white wines especially um, should be right around, I want to say in the low 50s, mm. high 40s, low 50s for their ideal taste. But, you know, I think this might hold up. And once again, I'll, I'll let you know on the next show whether it held up. And, oh, and you're but, actually teaching me a lot because I know I love my wines really cold, but maybe I'm missing out if I get a nice bottle of wine and I want it really chilled. I might not do that anymore. Well, Pinot Grigio, I think, Rob, you can you can actually drink a little cold than your average white. Pinot Grigios can be drunk a little on the chiller side. Mm -hmm. Chardonnays, you know, the wine snobs would say there's a varying or a very specific temperature. And I try to get that specific here because that, that's not what the show's about. Generally, if you like it at a certain temperature and if it tastes good, then that's what you drink it at. Right. Mm -hmm. But it really, it's just about the temperature. It's about tasting the grape. Mm -hmm. Right. Some of mm -hmm. us just want the alcohol. So we, <laughs> the grape becomes secondary. What, yeah. are your, what are your thoughts on Sauvignon Blanc as far as coldness? Is that something that yeah, uh, the, can be... Perfect, perfect question. Yes, that should be colder, too. Okay. I think a good cold Sauvignon Blanc in the spring and summertime, especially if you're outside at a restaurant or Newport or wherever you are in the local area of the Cape, and yeah, it's got to be chilled. It's got to be yeah. pretty cold. Mm -hmm. And I, I solve the problem of overwarming too fast outside is I do a very small pour. I keep the mm -hmm. bottle in the chiller, do a small pour, two mm -hmm. sips gone, so it's chilled, then I re-pour. Instead of filling my glass up. And then it gets warm. And yeah. then it gets warm. Yeah. Oh, it always stays idea. enjoyable. Yeah. And you still drink as much, but you just right. make more pours. <laughs> so I just drink faster. Yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. And it tastes good every time. So the third wine uh, you ladies brought in, I'm, it's been a while since I had the Claude de Bose. Oh, yeah. Um, Bob, on the one we just tasted, what was the price point on that out of curiosity? It ranges between 13 to 15 mm. sometimes 16 You can find that's the different bad. prices. That's not bad at all. And really, that's the kind of price point you want to pay most of the time when you're looking for a halfway decent wine. Yep. That's not always true. As you know, two months back, we did the Chardonnay show that everything was covered up, and I think we all picked the most inexpensive white as our favorite. So so you guys, this is the one that you picked. You've had this a couple times, yes. I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. We've had this before. Once or twice, Once yes. Or twice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I got something. That's very interesting, too. I've had <laughs> this one. It's been a few years since I've had this one, only because I don't drink a lot of shards. But I'm going to go through the commentary first before I make my comment. This one, I get the buttery, but also some oak in it. And yeah, to me, the flavor. Um, it's a little bit different than the, the last one we tried. Oh, it's different. Yes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Yep. Yeah. I definitely get the buttery. Yeah, taste. that buttery doesn't have kind of the, the dryness, mm -hmm. uh, I think, on the, on the after, after note there. Um, great. I, I Personally, I think it's a great value yes. uh, mm -hmm. wine. Uh, we have this in the house all the time. It's kind of our go-to for just a good wine. Uh, and this is another French, have. by the way. I should let people know, mm -hmm. right? I believe that's also a French. It's California, uh, California. Oh, the Claus is, yep. is a California. Yep. That's right. Yep. I was going to say the same thing. It's our go-to wine. We, we just have it. We always have it in the fridge and enjoy it. It's very reasonably priced. And um, I like it. Well, I'll start off with, like it's been a while since I had this one. There's a definite kick. The first mm -hmm. sip hits you right in the back of the throat. Now, I don't know if that's because... Um, you said this was oak fermented? Is the clause oak fermented? Yes. I believe so. Compared to the steel, I think that's what I'm getting. Mm. Um, I'm not saying that's good or bad, but that's what I noticed I first when I took the first, first sip. Mm. The flavor profile, I think, is similar to the Lalande, though different. I know that doesn't seem to make sense, but... But it does. <laughs> if, you're, if you're doing a lot of wine, it does, sort of. Um, it's good, mm -hmm. but it's different. It's right. different compared to the first Chardonnay, which is what we, I do this show because these are all Chardonnays, but they all taste different. 
And I would say the Lalande is definitely a little smoother. It doesn't mm -hmm. have that kick that you were talking about. Okay. And then you say, oh, you know, you talk about the price range and that's about $5 more. So if you like, you know, a, a glass of wine when you get home, um, the Clos de Bois is a little bit better price wise. Mm -hmm. But I thought the Lalande was really good. Yeah. yeah. I think that one's my favorite so far the right today. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and the, the I, I think the Clos de Bois is always, like you said, good to have in the it's house. It's a go-to, yeah. right? It's a go-to. I think it's a pleaser. You know, people come over, some company. I think people would really enjoy it and the price point. Yeah, right. that is, that is it. interesting, to, uh, like the steel and the oak, how, how much that must make a difference. It does Just, make a difference, yeah. 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 You know, and I know we have a couple of West Hartford natives besides myself. I know Jen, you're an out in uh, Vernon. 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 I used to live in West Hartford. And uh, there's so many places to mm -hmm. buy what we're drinking here on the table tonight. And that's what's great about living in sort of a cosmopolitan mm -hmm. area. I mean, we're not in New York, but there are a lot of places that do wine tastings. They do Chardonnay yeah. tastings. And wow. I'm sure that's probably how you found some of the ones that you've liked. You went to a wine tasting right. and taste it. And that's probably the best way to experiment with Chardonnays, especially if you've not overly familiar with them because mm -hmm. you know, I still tend to shy away from them. Uh, I like a Sauvignon Blanc a little bit more than a Chardonnay. <laughs> but, um, you know, I can see how this can fit in on a picnic outside or uh, Absolutely. You know, sitting on a deck in the springtime or summertime. And, you know. and that's always a nice time when you go to a wine tasting in the spring or the fall and you get, you know, locally, um, you don't say brewed wines, mm -hmm. you say locally what? Uh, Harvest. Yeah, Harvested wine, right. Yeah. Harvest. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. The, the, the brood comment. Yes. Really <laughs> so. Yeah, it's been good. My, my wife, actually, I was not, I drank mostly reds and never really drank a lot of whites, but, you know, I've, she enjoys Chardonnay, and um, I've grown to actually enjoy them mm -hmm. over the years. Well, that's what's great, because when you share wine with people, like I do, have been doing this show now for almost four years, um, you ex expose yourself to a lot of different varietals that you might not ever have tried because you sort of close yourself to trying stuff. I know, Jen, you just recently started drinking red wines. I did. My husband and I are really and into red right now. So see how enjoy what that is. Oh, yeah. And it, it was great for the winter especially, but now that spring hopefully is in the air soon. That's it right. It be a nice... It's April. You're watching the show. Hopefully it's nice weather and you're drinking <laughs> along with us. Now, the, the fourth wine we'll be drinking tonight, and um, I've never had this one either. It's a William Cole. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm not sure what the, um, the region is on this. Is it Chilean? Uh, yes, it is. And oh. did you pick this one off just off the top of your head? Or did you know what, tell you this, about um, actually at the, uh, the wine store, there was just that sign that said great wine, full of flavor. So I thought, let's give it a shot. Mm. I guess you can't underestimate the just regular advertisement for uh, yeah. powerful <laughs> wine. Sometimes it's true. Sometimes, yeah. I've actually had a lot of luck with that, so, you know, this winter, my husband and I were trying a lot of reds, like we said, and we just tried bottle after bottle just to see what, what we really enjoyed. And, and I've been there. No yeah, way. you know, just <laughs> trying out and every time we'd go picking a new bottle. So you never well, know. Well, I don't know about you, Rob, but I've had a lot of Chilean wines, and generally they're all good. I mean, um, it's, I've never had actually a Chilean Chardonnay, I don't think, on the show. I've mm -hmm. had Chilean reds and some other type of whites, but I don't think I've ever had just a Chardonnay. Chile. So. I have to say, if I'm at a restaurant, I always go for the Chilean wines mm. because they are good. Can you smell that right off the bat? Uh, right before off the anybody bat. took yeah. a, that's fascinating. Right off the bat. And once again, I want to emphasize these are all Chardonnays, but the aroma mm. from this particular wine hit me when the glass was down here. Mm -hmm. Definitely get the aroma. Mm -hmm. That's got a kick too. Yeah. Wow. I'm going to start off on this one because that's Please, uh, that's pretty interesting. That is very, yeah. and I'm not going to say it's good, interesting off the bat. I might have to take a few more sips of that, but that is a very unique flavor mm -hmm. compared to the other three Chardonnays mm -hmm. we drank tonight. It's like a little spicy. Um, I can see, I can see why you would say spicy, Rob. What do you think? I'm tr I'm still trying to think of it's exact, a little shocking. Exactly, yeah, yeah, it yeah exactly how it, it all it, works and what what those flavors are. It's it's definitely. Unique and different. I'm not the getting the buttery one. on this one at all. No. I mean, maybe a little no. peppery. Mm -hmm. Actually, right? yeah. Yeah. there's that little spice. Mm -hmm. There's that spice, and you smell it too. There's oh, yeah. definitely an aroma. You can definitely smell this wine before the glass comes close to you. Now, a lot of times, that means that the character of the wine is going to be very powerful. Also, not always. Sometimes we've drank wine on the show 
where you smell the wine, you say, oh my God, I can't wait to taste it, and you taste it, and it's rather flat. Mm. So that's not always a characteristic of a really flavorful wine, but this is really unique. And I'm going to say it's spicy because it's from Chile, and that's very spicy <laughs> culture. <laughs> yeah, that was good. I can see with the three, the last three that we've had, there is uh, definitely s differences and taste preferences mm -hmm. for all three. And um, I guess it just depends on your own personal preference. But once again, you would not have an opportunity to try mm. four different Chardonnays, of course, unless you came on my show. <laughs> but in general, the reason I like doing this show is because I want people to do exactly what we're doing. Yeah. You know, you guys, you're like me, you have a lot of parties. You're always having a party, you're having yeah. going out to somebody's house. And I always find that bringing a lot of different varietals or a lot of different names of the same varietals mm -hmm. and right. just experimenting and talking right. about them is a fun way to have a party. Yep. Now, granted, a lot of stuff tastes the same after, after <laughs> a <minute>. while. <laughs> but if you start off small and work up to it, it's not quite as bad. Yeah. So I, I, I'm going to give this. I'm, I'm not making up my mind on this one yet. I'm, I'm just I can't make yeah. up my mind on this one. It's 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 hard after you tasted these two, especially after the second one. I'm like I'm sold on that one mm -hmm. yes, for my own absolutely. taste buds. I would definitely purchase right the second one we've tasted. Mm -hmm. There's a certain characteristic of the William Cole that I don't think is agreeing with me. Now, I don't know, once again, because it's competing with the other flavors of the other three wines. Right. Which is a possibility. Could be. Or it's just a characteristic of this particular Chardonnay that doesn't mm -hmm. agree with me. But There's something there, that, that peppery or whatever it is, it's a very... Did you like it? I, I'm not a huge fan of it, actually. Um, yeah. It's... It, I'm uh, not a not a big fan of the flavors. Yeah. I think it's Th there's um, no right or wrong answer. So. Right? Yeah. No. No. It, right. It's it, it's not awful. And again, if I was served that at a party, I'm sure I would, I would have plenty <laughs> of it. Um, which is, is not <laughs> a problem. If I had um, a choice. Exactly. Yeah. Right. There's there's a little bit of that uh, that pepper aftertaste that mm -hmm. isn't uh, doesn't agree with me personally. Right. But right. Somebody yeah. else might like it. I, I agree, and that's uh, once again, obviously, you're not if you're not having the same wine that we're drinking back at your home right now as you're watching our show, you can go and try it. But there's definitely, out of the three we drank tonight, something about the last one that I've never really experienced in a Chardonnay before, which is why I'm still a little tongue-tied about how to best to describe it. Right. And it's not bad. I'm not saying it's good. But it's in, I'm indifferent about it because I'm not sure where it would fit and how I would incorporate that into mm. a party. Right. I'm not sure that would even go well with a, a cheese. It just has I a I was just thinking well, that, like, maybe like um, a, pe not a peppercorn cheese, a... Uh, Something that would complement that spicy yeah, I, flavor. I just, I, I don't really, and I was just saying I love Chilean wines, and I, I've never had one that spicy. Yeah. I would agree. So I, I yeah, I would say that as well. The rest you could kind of figure some foods you could mm -hmm. pair it with. That one, nothing, nothing's coming to <laughs> mind. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I'm going to, like I said, I like plugging local businesses here in town. I want to emphasize that a lot of, Restaurants here in West Hartford, as, as you ladies know, mm -hmm. um, have a great wine selection. Absolutely. And uh, they do sliders. And whenever you have a chance to go into uh, a, a, a restaurant that has, well, actually, that's not sliders, is not the right word for it. The little wine samples when they serve you. Oh, is a flight? A flight, flight yes. yes. Oh, my, my mind's on hamburgers tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but I, if you have a chance to try <laughs> we'll and see that burger show after. That's this, right, yes. that ties into the spring thing, exactly. Yes. But if you have a chance to do flights, that's a good way to try different Chardonnays or any variety. Absolutely. And there's a lot of restaurants here in town that do that. So, you know, visit our local restaurants and give them a shot. Absolutely. But um, I think I'm going to give this one, after taking another sip while you were talking, mm -hmm. a thumbs down. Yeah. I agree. I don't yeah. think I'd purchase it again. But like Rob said, if, I, if that was all that was offered at a party, I would probably Most likely. have a glass yes. or two. Yes. <laughs> right. But... Uh, we know yeah. that's going to get emptied this evening. We know that. So. <laughs> Probably, <laughs> that's yes. that. I think what's interesting is when you have a wine like this, it's one of the wines where if it's not overly agreeable with you, mm -hmm. you can't drink too much of it because it just sort of hurts after a while. Right. Especially, yeah, I find this, this wine is hurting me a little in my throat. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I, that's the best way to describe it. Burn, I think, is, is the go. word I was burn. looking for. There's a burn, There's a burn there's to a burn. it. There's and no that's, whiskey in there. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> that's a better burn. But no, there's, there's a little bit of a burn to it, and that's, uh, that's what was throwing me off. Yeah. Well, like I said, I, I appreciate you guys bringing the two wines in to pair with my two. It was, it was a great way to uh, show the differences in the wine. 
So before we wrap up the show tonight, because I got a few things I want to say, is what's up for the well? It's in April, so what are you guys' plans? What are, what's going on for April? Any big parties coming up? Or um, always a big party. Always a big party. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we all look forward to spring and summertime, and um, you know, we have uh, some holidays around the corner. So we'll make grilling sure we on have, the deck. Yeah, with some nice wine. Now that the snow is gone and the chill. Mm -hmm. Well, I will say after doing my second Chardonnay show. I think I'm going to do a Pinot Grigio show yeah. or Sauvignon Blanc show only next. Yeah. And uh, in the summertime, that's probably the best way to go. Yeah. I think I'm finally have done, I've, I'm full with Chardonnays. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, the Chardonnay show is finally out of my system. I've done, this is my second one now. <laughs> I've tasted enough Chardonnays. I think I've made up my mind on what type of Chardonnays I like. So I'm pretty much sold on Chardonnays. But I think we were talking about earlier, Rob, Sauvignon Blanc is what's dear to my heart. And I think uh, that's the next show. Makes and sense. I will have you on it because I know you're a big summer. I would love to be like on that show. I am, I am. Best summer wine going, I think. Mm. Do, do you guys do Sauvignon Blancs too? I don't. Maybe well. now you will. But I'll try it. <laughs> sure, we'll try it. It's, I mean, it's, the, it's to me, it's the, the best on the deck, fish on the grill, mm. Sauvignon Blanc, you know, chilled in a cooler. Can't, uh, can't beat it. It just sounds so summerish. It does, it's, it does. I love it. it. <laughs> Yeah. Well, like I said, I mean, there was a great opportunity to have, once again, three people on the show tonight drinking with me and doing a better, like when Jim and I do the show, just me and him, we sort of have the same taste characteristics, mm. so we tend to agree a lot. So I like when I have the opportunity to have more than two people on to drink different varietals and have some different opinions. And I think we sort of got that today. I think, I think uh, so. though, though we agreed on some stuff, I think only, it was only me and you, Rob, that didn't like the last one, right? Yeah. Yep. Wasn't my favorite. It's still not okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but the little Andy sold me. That and that and was that yeah. took over. That that was. And really that's the good. great thing. And thank you for having us on because. Yeah, thank you for having. You know, us. we're so used to what we're used to, so it's great when you can uh, try something new and and find your your new go-to. Right. For a couple dollars more. Yeah, and I right. tell you, I might even get that first one there that will allow for a party. Yeah. Well, for a party. It's so quirky yep. that I think yeah. you know I it'll look good. Yeah. Conversation right. piece as well. Yeah. You know, with the pop top, the unique bottle. So I, once again, I just want to thank my guests, thank you. Melissa, Thanks for Rob, having us. Jen. Thank you for having thank us. Thank you. And uh, I'm, just to let you guys know, I'm now done with Chardonnays for a couple shows. So, <laughs> never say never. Uh, you know, I, have, I have some great stuff planned for coming week. episodes. I, we're doing rosé, actually, oh, next fun. month. I'm going to have Jacob from Wise Old Dog on again, who's been a really go-to guy for me. I had some great fun with him. As you know, I filmed in his wine cellar during Christmas, and he's going to have some great, great rosés on the show next month. And... Um, I know you guys will be eager to watch that show because I'm still trying to get my good friends into rosés. It's not easy, <laughs> but I'm going to keep trying. So thanks for watching. Please check me out on Two Guys and a Lot of Wine. I can't even remember the name of the show. <laughs> two Guys and a Lot of Wine Facebook page. Check us out at whctv.org. And until next time, keep all of us in your wine, wine cellar. cellar.